everyone, it's Alicia too, and I would like to welcome you to my interview with Blackcraft Cult's very own Bobby Shabensky. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm fantastic. How okay. are you? Good. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, of course. I have to kick things off by saying massive congratulations on the success <laughs> of Burning Bridges. Not just sold out, but the show is absolutely phenomenal. So now there's been a little bit of time to reflect. How are you feeling about everything? Uh, anxious, <laughs> nervous, you know, because it's like where you take it from here. It's mm -hmm. like, I don't know, I feel like we went all in, uh, the crew and everyone was, I don't know, it's crazy. I'm really nervous about the upcoming shows because it's like uh, we have October 5th in Anaheim and then we go to uh, Buffalo, New York in December. So it's like, how do you follow this crazy show, you yeah. know? So got to figure that out. <laughs> Well, it's been so cool to kind of see the behind the scenes and everything that's been in the works. But coming up, something that's neat is, you know that Blackcraft is known for the Super Bowl clothing, but how did wrestling actually come into mix? Because not many people confuse <laughs> those two so effortlessly like you do. Right. Um, I mean, I grew up loving Stone Cold Steve Austin. Like, when I first saw him, like, it changed my life. Like, watching the Attitude Era stuff, I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen, you know? And then uh, my ex-fiance uh, was a WWE superstar. So I kind of got involved in the industry that way and I just fell in love with the business, like getting to like some of my best friends now, like Colby Lopez, you know, Chris Jericho, um, Corbin, list goes on, but just seeing their work ethic and, and what they do each day, like inspires me. And I'm like, I want to work that hard. And I just love the industry. So it kind of like, I don't know, kind of all goes together. And my biggest thing is I love music and I love wrestling and I think like they could speak to each other, so that's, I don't know, I wanted to create something that no one's really doing. Absolutely. Isn't it kind of crazy when you go from being a fan of somebody and then actually being in the same locker room as them or working with them? Yeah, it freaks me out. Like, just with, <laughs> just with my clothing brand, you know, like working with, like, Kirk from Metallica, mm -hmm. it's like, or Corey Taylor from Slipknot, I'm like, this is crazy. So to work with some of the WWE guys, it's like, it's crazy. Yeah, it's Speaking nuts. to working with different people, how has it been working with Doug Bradley? <laughs> it's been crazy because he's like a... a uh, he's like such a big inspiration of mine, you know. Um, shit, sorry. Cut. Sorry, Cut. sorry. Come on, brother. Okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Take it, take it. All right, all right. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I thought it was sorry, bro. I thought it was on. He always gives me shit all day long because I'm, I'm like, always on my phone. See, like, bro, you don't need your phone. I'm sorry. You're good. You're. I'm never gonna hear. Yeah, we'll just we'll just take it from that question. Cool. I'm never gonna hear the end of this. No, you're not. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. That was, I feel like that was rude of me. It's okay. Okay. It happens all the time. All right. Yeah. all right. Quiet on set. And speaking to working with extremely cool people, how has it been working with Doug Bradley? Um, it, it's been such a honor because he's been one of the biggest inspirations of my life, you know? Like, when I first saw Hellraiser, uh, well, that movie made me never trust women, you know, because he taught me that out of that movie. But, uh, no, it's been crazy. Like when we, when I had the idea to work with Doug, because we've worked with Doug in my clothing brand. Like we do a bunch of collaborations, and uh, he was a big part of my whiskey launch. Uh, we did a drink with him, so I was like, I really want to use Doug, you know, because it, it kind of goes back to my whole thing, like with the music and uh, wrestling combined. I was like, man, if you could add the horror movie world, who better than Doug Bradley, you know? Um, I was like nervous when I approached him for it, because I was like, oh, he's not going to be into this, you know? So when uh, Brandon and I, uh, one of my partners with this, like. We approached him and he was like, I don't know if he was hesitant. I think he was just really nervous about the whole thing because it's like not in his world because he's so, I guess, I don't know the word, what's the word? Like he's so in the movie world. This is completely different, you know? And when I asked him, like, do you like wrestling? He's like, I don't really know much about it. And I'm like, bro, he's never going to go for this, you know? Um, but it, it's been weird working with him because lately, like Brandon and I, like to, to convince Doug to come on board, right? It, it took a lot of convincing, but it was like, dude, you just gotta like live this character, you know? And he's like, well, what's the character? And we, you know, we kind of figured out what the character was and it, it was the preacher, right? And he was like, okay. And you could tell he was like hesitant on the whole thing. And we're just like, Brandon, Brandon especially was like, dude, you just gotta live like the preacher role. And he like kind of took this whole method approach to it. And uh, now we'll go out to like dinner. We'll have like meetings with him and I'm like, hey man you're not you know like Doug hello yeah. and, but he's so into this role now and I'm commits. fully committed wow. it's kind of weird so it's like like I don't even know like do I hug him now you know what I mean like I don't know it's like a it like went from being like really good friends to now he's yeah, just like hugging Doug or the preacher? I can't tell the difference you know so it's it's yeah it's weird okay. but it was it's been it's been awesome that's fantastic yeah we'll see where it goes so I'm excited earlier you had mentioned how you've been a wrestling fan for a very long time but how old were you when you first got into things oh man you're gonna ask me to do math uh <laughs> I just turned 30, 
So like since 1999. Okay, and was there anyone in specific that kind of got you into it? Uh, Stone Cold for sure. Hey guys, Doug yeah, has a hard sure. out at four. You think we could switch these interviews to get them done first? Yeah, yeah that's fine. That's, yeah. yeah, let's just cut. Let's just cut and we'll okay. get it going. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we'd be Mike, you know. Yep, good. You got to grab it though. Yeah, that's fine. Jake, you want to keep that roll or you want to cut it? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Sorry. Hi. How are you? Brown. I'm very well. All right, I'm going to uh, put this right up on the inside of your jacket. Oh, you, you go right now. Right, right. Um, yes, hello. Alicia, so nice Good. to meet you. I see that. <laughs> um, Alicia, a tout? A toot. A toot? Yes. A lot of people wouldn't think it is that, but okay. go ahead and say it. Alicia, a toot. Welcome to my show. We're going to be just talking about a bunch um, uh, of different uh, things, but in specific, the sold okay. out recent Latin craft recipe. Well, yes. With that, you could just put it right in your pocket. Uh, okay. In what? Pocket. In, in there? Perfect. Is that good? Perfect. Yes. It's all professional. Well, I would wait till the end of the interview to decide that. <laughs> we'll, see if, we'll see if it's the same there. I'm Alicia, and I would like to welcome you to my interview with Doug Bradley. Hello. Hello. Thank Hello. you for having me. I'm very well. And you? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me. Good, good. Well, as I good. mentioned before, the camera started rolling and we saw that big red light. We're going to talk about black craft wrestling as you were actually at the sold out Burning Bridges show. So you're repping. That's beautiful. You came prepared. Uh, how was it being a part of the sold out show? Uh, it was pretty amazing. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, my my origins in acting is in theatre, so I'm used to being on stage and, and doing live things uh, and Q and A's at conventions. This was something else, uh, and I don't mind ad admitting I was nervous, anxious. It's a lot of people, <laughs> and first time uh, we'd done it. You know, you don't want anything to go wrong, of course. Um, and it didn't yet. Um, and it was, it's amazing, um, you, you know, the, the, the energy of a crowd like that is, uh, is extraordinary and that kind of pulls you through, so a tremendous experience. I'm looking forward to the next one now. Me as well. And how did you go from that theatre background, film, and then into professional wrestling? <laughs> it doesn't sound like a natural progression, does it? <laughs> it doesn't. No. Um, well, uh, I... I had known, I mean, I, I'll, I'll be honest from the start, I, I, I have never really been a fan of wrestling. It would be very easy for me now to be saying, yes, I was always a fan, always a fan. Uh, my kids were, I guess, back in the uh, Stone Cold Triple H day, and, and they had figures. And this was in the UK, in, in London. It's the popularity was that huge. Um, but I knew Bobby, and that really comes through Steph. She had become aware of Blackcraft, and uh, we were we we loved everything they were doing. And we were kind of walking billboards for Blackcraft. Um, we we I, I would wear their shirts simply because I thought they were, you know, so cool at conventions. Um, we got to know Bobby. We did some crossover shirts. Pinhead Blackcraft crossover shirts, uh, and then Bobby contacted us and said, um, "We're launching Blackcraft Wrestling," and I, I had helped with the launch of the Blackcraft Whiskey as well. So he called and said, "We're we're launching Blackcraft Wrestling. We'd like you to be involved." And I said, "Oh, okay." <laughs> uh, and it all it's it's all rolled from there, really. You have to tell me a little bit about the preacher character that you portray. Yes. Well, ev everything, everything with this has been very spontaneous in fairly short order. Um, and it, it was evident that, that I needed to, to find a character. And I had no idea w what it was. Um, and really, the whole thing was built around uh, having my grandfather's frock coat still in my possession. He was a Baptist minister in, in Scotland, and this was his tailored frock coat, 
which when he died, his son was going to throw out. And I realized he was about to do this, and I went, <coughs> excuse me, mm -hmm. if you don't want it. <laughs> uh, so from that, uh, I started putting elements together, and, and so the, the, the visual idea of the character was created. It's very much, it's very obviously based on uh, Robert Mitchum's role in The Night of the Hunter, which is a, which is a wonderful film. It's always been one of my favorite movies and uh, um, a, a favorite character. So people who know the movie will see the similarity very quickly. I guess that's where the name of the preacher came from or whether that was Bobby's idea. I honestly now don't remember. So I knew what he was called and I knew what he looked like and I didn't know anything more than that. And neither did Bobby and we would, we would meet and talk about it and we would always be laughing uh, that, w that we had no idea what we were doing. Um, and w which has been terrifying, but it's also very, a very creative thing. It's also very liberating when something you feel is terrifying to begin with turns out to be it, something amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's not always fun when you are that frightened, and I was. I, I no hesitation in admitting that. But um, to, 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 to let something build organically in, in that way, and, uh, um, I, and we're still doing that. So having done Burning Bridges and we're going on to the next show and the show after that, the storylines with the wrestlers will start to develop and the storyline with, with the cult will start to develop and, and so the character will still develop. So for me, it's not, it's not a, a, um, a, you know, a, a cast in stone character at this point. Um, I, I'm still entirely open to ideas and developing it as we go along, which is fun. And it's a, such a, a whole new departure for me. I can't tell you, but it's great. I'm glad you're enjoying it so far. So far. <laughs> <laughs> well, at Burning Bridges, we saw a lot of incredible things happen. But something that absolutely shocked fans there is the fact that Matt Justice refused to join the cult. So well, what's next? 